Well, hi, and thanks for joining me in my shop once again. I'm going to be spending probably this entire video just reviewing the schematic and trying to relate some parts of the schematic over to the radio. And I'm trying to show you a few discoveries I made about this, this radio. It's a little bit different than most. And uh, there still is, of course, some fogginess in my mind on exactly how uh, the schematic, uh, like what's really shown in the schematic, like the complications due to this switch here. And it makes it tough. So let's let's just get right into it here. Okay. Uh, so I think the first thing I want to talk a little bit about is the quality of this schematic diagram. So I'm going to back out here so we can see the entire the entire thing. This has come from uh, Radio Museum, by the way. I get a lot of schematics from Radio Museum. I'm a member of that. So here we go. So take a look at this. Now uh, this may be. This may have been put together in modern times from separate pages. I don't think so. I think this is exactly the way the schematic was prepared originally. So we look at it, right away you see three sections, top, middle, bottom. Top section has a bunch of numbers on it. All those numbers are all the components. And of course they're positioned, as you might guess, right above where the component can be found. So you see the T2 right there? Ah, there's T2. So this is an easy way, and look, they've got them listed here, condensers, resistors, inductances, tubes, everything. So if you need to know where a part is in the schematic, you can quickly look for resistor number, something or other, and then look down and find it. It's going to be somewhere down here. So that's a great tool. It appears on some schematics, uh, not on most, though. So that, that's a great part of this drawing. And of course, down here is the parts list, uh, which can be very, very helpful. Uh, when you're trying to uh, sort out stuff, especially since the values are not written up here in the schematic, they're in this table. Now we look at the schematic itself. Uh, there's some problems with this uh, drawing. I don't know if I mentioned that in the past, for a couple of years I was a drafting supervisor of a six or eight team, or six or eight person drafting section in an engineering department of a power company. And uh, we produced uh, drawings of uh, cable installations out in the streets. Poles, wires, underground cables, manholes, all that stuff. So, uh, when I look at this uh, uh, drawing, I can look at it with my supervisory eyes. And right away I would say, ooh, there's a really bad choice made in this schematic. And it involves this part here that I'm circling right now. This area here, which is drawn right up in the main part of the drawing space, in fact, it's put dead center in the page, even. This is the most important spot on the whole piece of paper. And here's this thing. What you would normally find here is one of the IF transformers. You can see one here. The other one has been shoved up here on the diagram. Now what this does is it disrupts the pictorial flow of the overall radio. This whole area here, which is the local oscillator <coughs> switches and the coils here for it, this whole piece should have been drawn down here. And then this piece <coughs> should have been drawn in here. The whole thing should have been moved to the left into this space and it would have uncrammed this area here which is very hard to look at. This is very, very difficult to look at. <clears throat> the second thing I would say about this drawing, <coughs> excuse me, on a general basis, I sure hope the guy who drew it isn't watching this video. Is his name on here? I don't see his name. Sometimes the actual, <coughs> excuse me, drafts persons and engineer and all that, all their names end up on these things somewhere. Originally they probably were. So this area here is, is the other switch, switch number two, the, one I pointed to at the start of the video that I'm complaining about. This switch is shown below this line for some reason. I'm not sure. I'm sure by I am sure. It's the space problems with the drawing. So drawing it down here sends a logical message that this is not really related to this. Well, it's not a tall case. This is intimately involved with all this stuff. The wires are going every which way in here. So again, it's just a visual problem I think uh, this drawing hit my desk, I would have rejected it. 
In fact, I would have seen it in production and said right then, hey, what are you doing putting this here? Put it down here. But mind you, all the drafting people I worked with would never have drawn it like this. They, they, they would have put this down here. They, they, they would have done things differently here. Uh, it's something called white space management. Um, so not a lot of white space on this page. So enough of that, enough of that. Let's take a look at the actual schematic. I'm just going to get right to the part that's of interest to me. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing here. I'm just going to get right to this area here. So let me zoom in here. So we're looking at it. If you're trying to watch this video on your phone, you must be having trouble seeing the details here. I'm go one more. Okay. I spent a long time staring at this, trying to sort out these switches, trying to figure out everything that's going on in here. One of the things I noticed, which I, I don't understand, and I'm just going to, because there's a lot here I could talk about, I really don't want to spend too much time <laughs> talking endlessly about this. I'll just get to this point. So here's the volume control. On the volume control is a tap and the slider. I know this is the slider, and I said before, you can tell this is the slider because it's hooked up to the grid of the audio preamp tube. And this thing, what is this thing doing? Well, it's got a resistor here to ground. And that resistor is R9, 22K. It's not a huge resistor. 22K there. This whole resistor here, I believe, is a megohm, R9, R8 rather, one megohm. So from the tap, there's a takeoff point of 22K to ground. Hmm. But there's another wire that heads off over to here, into this. Oh my gosh, what is going on there? I don't know. I hadn't sorted this out 100%. And even though I spent hours, I think two hours, sure, I tell you, it felt like two hours. It may have only been an hour, but <laughs> it felt like two hours. Another thing is, usually uh, these volume controls have the signal from the radio fed into one end, and the other end is usually just tied to B minus, chassis, ground, whatever you want to call it. But look at this one. Here's the bottom, which you would think would go to the ground here, but it doesn't. I never noticed this before. It goes over here. Here, why it's on the secondary side of the output transformer. Secondary side of the output transformer. This side here, where you see the electrolytic capacitor and its minus sign there, you follow this wire down. Oh, why it's B minus. So the speaker essentially is connected one side of the speaker output circuit is grounded to the chassis. Okay, that gives reference for these other circuits. So what's going on here with this? This would strike me as a feedback. <coughs> Excuse me. And normally you feed back a signal from the output and you feed it in, basically into this grid or, or maybe into this grid somewhere in this circuit here bottom of volume control has me really thrown off bottom of the volume control and 22k to ground I don't understand how this really works as far as I know you can turn this slider right past this tab right to here <coughs> excuse me at that point you'd have full Full volume. Would you? Would you have full volume? No, you'd have minimum volume when this is down here. Let's look at how the signal gets into this. We'll just trace this back. This is signal being fed into the top of the volume control. Follow it down very carefully. Come here. Okay, so there's a capacitor to ground. Resistor. Another capacitor. Another one, and it goes into this switch. Okay. Um, I can 
can trace it out. So here it is. So here it's coming here, it's coming here out, it's going onto the ring. So basically what is being fed this way is being selected by this switch. Okay, so the switch is currently shown in the off radio position. As soon as you turn it one notch, this slider connection thing will move to here. This one will move to here. I believe these are then shorted together, connected together through the ring and to here. So it knows this, 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 this. They're all connected together to this wire. <clears throat> so when you switch to AM, you've hooked up the top of the volume resistor to this wire here. We follow this wire back, and with no surprise, it arrives at the output of the radio circuitry in here. <coughs> Excuse me. Output of the, the detector would be the best thing to say here. So we have the output. Here it is here. There's the diode. <coughs> Audio output of the detector. Fed down here. Through this switch. In AM. <coughs> finds its way out here. Travels along here. Got a resistor probably part of some kind of filtering that's going on here. Top of the volume. Volume control picks off some of the audio, fires it to the grid on its way out to the speaker. <clears throat> what is this? What is this for? Coming down here. And I'm asking that question seriously. <laughs> <clears throat> So one of you commented that about the very complex feedback and tone control circuitry in this radio. And I'm sure what you were commenting on was all this stuff. All this stuff, the feedback. Look, this feedback line right here is connected here. It's connected here. Holy smokes. So what is going on here? This is switching a complex array of resistors and capacitors to affect the feedback coming from the output. Feedback, by the way, is a powerful way to reduce distortion in a radio. It's a, it's a trick. The trick was learned, I don't know, in the early 30s, I think. And once it was learned, it's just been applied forever. And it's the reason why uh, most of our amplifiers have very low distortion, because of feedback, believe it or not. You can read up on that to understand it better. So it's not surprising that there's a way in which the output signal gets shot back into the radio. But this is all just confused me the heck. I spent a long time studying this. But I did make some more important observations. Important to me and what I'm trying to do with this radio. So one of them is here. Okay, so you see it comes off the slider of the volume control through a capacitor to the grid. The other way, there's a capacitor down here. And if you look at the switch, this capacitor appears to be mounted right on the switch, just because it's going between this terminal and that terminal. I'm likely to find that one right on the switch. And uh, these two appear to be right on the switch. But the fact is they aren't. In fact, this one is sitting mounted on the switch. This one is somewhere else I can't remember now. So I don't want <coughs> to try to analyze this right now live on this video. Let's just say that when it comes time for me to double check some of the capacitors that I've got around the switch, I'll show you this on camera in a moment, making sure I understand their location in reality and not being fooled by this diagram and thinking well, they showed the capacitor here, it must be near the switch, when in fact it's way off somewhere else. Uh, I've been fooled by this. I think in my previous romp through this radio, uh, three, three, three years ago, whenever it was, three or four years ago, in my earlier days at uh, trying to do serious work, and I wasn't very serious when I did this, obviously, I got fooled. I got fooled all over the place here, and the things I did to this switch are probably 
the source of some of the problems in the radio. So I really need to verify all this stuff now. Uh, that'll be part of what I'm doing going forward. Now, there's something else here, too. You might remember, uh, some of you do, I know it. Early on in this video series, I cut out a resistor which appeared to be airborne. Let me just flip back to that camera here. So there, there was a capacitor I, I had installed, basically ran through this space here, somewhere in here. I can't remember exactly where it was running. And for the life of me, I could not find this on the schematic. So I concluded, ah, let's remove it. Okay, so that's been bothering me, and it's been bothering some of you ever since I did that. It's been bothering me. I haven't forgotten about it for a moment. But I hadn't known what to do about it, because I can't, couldn't find anything on the schematic or information in the radio about what could have been there originally and what I should really be doing. Until, until I started looking at this diagram. Let's go back here. this diagram. It's another helpful diagram on this uh, radio. It just shows a layout of a lot of things. I had this table I was utilizing. I didn't study this very much, but boy, I have now. Let's zoom in on that thing. This is not a common thing. You find these on schematics. Uh, this one's done in kind of an interesting way. It shows the location of every component, the funny angle it might be on, makes it very easy to recognize, the basic size of the component. It's basically a picture of all the components under the radio, minus all the wires. And if it's not jumping out to you at this point, it sure is jumping out to me, C36. C36. Now, there's a number of large uh, capacitors in this radio. There's one here, C28, one here, two here. And um, my question would be, Jim, what did you do about this one back when you were working on the radio four years ago? Problem at that time is, I wouldn't have had one of these. It's physically big here in the radio, but let's take a look on the, uh, on the parts list, C36. Over the parts list. C36 is a 4 microfarad capacitor. Now, I did not have those, though. I did not have them at the time. So, I'm not sure what I did with this. Um, I either put a whopper in here, and it's somewhere I've relocated it in the radio, and I haven't figured that out yet, or I stuck that little one in there, the one I cut out at the start of this video, which is what I think I did. I think I took the biggest capacitor I had, not a whopper, not an electrolytic, stuck it in there just to have something. Now I've cut it out so there's nothing. So I think this is missing. C36. So that's really what I want to investigate right away. I don't want to get into working on this switch here until I'm forced into it. I really need to be forced into working on this switch. So I need to solve this first, because maybe this is going to resolve a number of things. Let's take a look on the circuit diagram, see what this does. C36. Take a look. C35. Here's C36. One side connected to ground, or connected to B- minus or the chassis. The other side is connected to here. This is the B+. Plus heading into the detector tube, or in this case we really shouldn't ignore the detector part, we should just pay attention to the triode here. So it's really the preamp part of this tube. Yeah, now why would you put a big capacitor here? Well, that's to drain away any signal, any hum signal, anything that might be going on on this wire here. It just shunt it to ground. Short it out, literally. Short out any AC here to ground through this capacitor. So you got a capacitor, you got a resistor here and here that helps with that process. Well, if you're, if you're going to ground out the 
B plus line, aren't you going to ground out the signal you need? No, because this resistor isolates it away, and this capacitor picks off the desired signal and sends it out to whoop, this capacitor. Let's make a mistake there. This capacitor sends it out to the final uh, final amplifier too. What exactly this one? Now that I pointed out, I don't know exactly what this guy is doing. C35. Uh, I don't know. Seems like a weird thing. How big is it? It's probably very small. Let's see. C35. 100 picofarads. 2,000 volts. 2,000 volts. Uh, why would you need a 2,000 volt rated capacitor there? Wow, okay, there's something curious about that. Maybe we should try to find that one too. Okay, so C36, going back to here, how can I find it? It's cooked, hooked up between R11 and R12. I can find R11 and R12 in the back of the radio. I'll be able to find where this should be connected. Remember, I'm assuming there's nothing there now, but maybe I, I could easily be wrong. Easily be wrong. Let's go see here. Uh, so R11, R12. Now, where are they in the radio? To make it easy, I'll use this. There's R11. Where's, and there's R12 right there. Okay, so right in this area. Okay, let's go look at the uh, radio here. Okay, um, yeah, so it's got to be up in this area here. Like a dummy, I didn't notice the uh, values. Well, one of them comes off a pin, so let, let's start with a pin. That would be a better way. So let me just take a peek myself at the schematic here quickly. And I'll say uh, the pin involved is uh, for R12 is the triode plate on V4. Okay, so the triode plate on that tube is pin 6. Pin 6, pin 6. Let's see here. So that's the tube, pin 6. Trying to spot the key on the or the uh, okay, so that's pin one. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is pin six. So pin six goes to a resistor. There's the resistor. And then there's another resistor attached right there. They're actually pretty much side by side here. Let me get something a little bit better to poke with here. The radio's not on, so I'm not concerned about shoving it. I just want to kind of reveal these two. There we go. Okay, so this, so we have from the pin through a resistor to a terminal, back through another resistor over to one of the IFs. And red wire's coming there too. So that would strike me, this is probably a high voltage terminal on one of the IFs there. Now, there's supposed to be, let's see, there's another wire coming off here. It's a red one. I don't remember that. Maybe that red one goes to where the capacitor is. Hmm. Oh my gosh, it comes all the way up to here. That makes this the one I put in. That makes this 36. Well, what, what's supposed to be out here? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Something went wrong there. 
Something's gone entirely wrong. Let's see if this appears in the diagram. I wasn't expecting anything to go wrong like that. Oh, there it is, C28. I'm looking for C36. Uh, how did I end up on the wrong one? How did that happen? C36. C36, positive side, connected between R12 and R11. Did I not really find? Oh, look, there is a wire going off. This capacitor. Maybe this is the one that's missing. Maybe this is the one I cut out. Maybe that's what we're going to find out. This weird thing. That is weird. It's weird enough I would say to myself, ah, who needs that? <laughs> I don't understand why that's there. Let's get rid of it. I don't understand why we give people health care. Let's get rid of it. <laughs> uh, let's look at the value of 11 and 12. Are 11, 12, 22 and, and 220. So it's a couple of red, red guys. A couple of double reds. Okay, back we go. Are these a couple of double red guys? Ooh, it's covered. That's a red, red. This one up here, it's kind of roughed up, but what are the chances it's not a red, red? Okay, so then I traced this red wire. I ended up dealing with this capacitor. How did that happen? Let's see here. I, I lower my camera a bit, but it actually it's a little hard to get it down. Just a little bit lower here. Red wire. There's no question. It comes up to this terminal. It connects to that resistor. But that re uh, capacitor, that little black capacitor, is the replacement for this one. Well, maybe they share a wire. Maybe, maybe that makes sense. Maybe there's two of these capacitors, and that's one of them, and the other one was here. And maybe they are sharing something. So let's take a look. Is that so? Let's take a look. Okay. So is. Um, 36 and the other one was uh, 30, no, uh, I can't remember, 28 and 36, 28 and 36, where the heck is 28, 36, big one there, big one there, big one here, look up here. We'll find it up here. Remember, I said the schematic help you find help you find condensers. Here we go. Come across here. C28 is here. C28. C28. C28 is, there it is, way down here. I'm not showing electrolytic. C28. What's going on? C28. 0.1 tubular. Ah, how can this be? C28. 27, 28, 29, right? 28. 0.1 tubular. C28. C28. This isn't 28. This must be something else. Like 29 or 23 or 25. So that means there'd be another C28 in here somewhere. A C27, 29, 28. What's the story here? C30. C30. Your eyes are going all over the place too, I guess, looking for this thing. to B, that's not 28.
got it. Uh oh. No wonder I'm a confused puppy. I think there's something different between the schematic and the radio I've got here. So, see? Oh, my gosh. C, C28. Um, oh, boy. I'm supposed to be fixing my previous errors. At least that's what I think I'm doing. Maybe I'm introducing just a new raft of errors. C28. C28. One side's ground, the other side goes to a switch. Oh, look at nothing else going on here. It's just a lone capacitor from the chassis to here. Well, that's not at all how C28 in this radio is wired or exists. What's going on here? The C28 in this in this radio, well, I'll tell you what, let's look at the radio. So this is supposed to be C28. The replacement is sitting here. This is disconnected, even though it's sitting in the radio. I never removed it. I just left it in here. One side is uh, definitely, well, it's not anymore, but it was grounded. And the other side, well, I've cut and removed the wires entirely. Here. What is here? So, this is a ground terminal. So our only hope is to trace it back this way. So what is the wire that, the mysterious wire comes down to these two resistors I'm interested in? Comes up, also, so it goes to the capacitor, also goes to this resistor, brown, black, orange. 10k resistor which then goes to a terminal so let's start with a terminal terminal on this tube this is the 6k8 and this would be terminal number 876 6 for this resistor yes terminal 6 so pin 6 on a 6K8, uh, pin 6 on a 6K8, you know, there's just too many numbers there for me to keep it straight. <laughs> 6K8. See, I lost it already. I'm sure I said pin number 6. 6. Write it down here. Pin six. Okay, so we'll go look at the schematic now on pin six and see what's hooked up to it. Uh, right. No, we won't. We gotta look at another. I'll, let's see. I'll use the manual here. I think. I think in this. Find a table here, which tells me on. Uh, Frequency changer tube, 6K8, pin number, you know, put the numbers here. Arr, I thought I thought the table had a number. One of these tables has a number. Pin 6, pin 5, V5 rather. V5, no, it's V2 we're actually interested in here. V2, it's crazy, they didn't write the, the actual tube number here. Once again, I slap in the drafts person's hand for this kind of stuff. Okay. Pin six. Plate. Plate. Plate of V2. Okay, plate of V2. So we go V2. Oh yeah, I should have done I have two plates. Which plate? Which plate was that? Pin six. On V2. Look at my book again. Six. This is a six K eight. Six K eight. Look more. Oh, son of a gun! I was looking at the wrong diagram. I was looking at the wrong diagram. Well, the triode plate, which the oscillator would utilize, is six.
So that's going to the triode plate, not the pentode plate or whatever the other one is. The triode plate. So it's here. Uh, so here we have a resistor going back to here. Okay, good. This is what I kind of wanted. So this R4 should be 10K. R4, if I'm on the ball, 10K. Okay, so I made it. So we know where we are. We are here. And that resistor, that capacitor has to be 36, not 28. 36 is rated as a 4 in the table here. See, 36 is a 4, and that's what I changed. Okay. But it's in the position shown as 28 on this diagram. And 36 is over here. Thirty-six doesn't show up. I said, well, it does. It's not this size. Thirty-six. Thirty. C. Thirty-six. Oh my God! What have I done? C. Twenty-eight. That's right. Twenty-eight is here, not where it appears in that other diagram. And Twenty-eight is point one, and that's what I cut out. I cut out a point one or something like that. So conceivably, C28 is missing in this radio. C28, according to the schematic up here, C28 is this one. This is what's missing. So it should go from chassis to here. Now I gotta find this. I gotta find this terminal on that switch. 